Um, at, um, we have a, a quorum, and I would ask that Mr. David Hines come up and do the pledge for us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Hines. <clears throat> so before we get into the meat of our agenda, I'm just going to make a couple of announcements. Um, we had a board retreat last Friday, and you'll hear more about that later in the program. But we were told by our friends at the Tennessee School Board Association that we are the exception rather than the rule in reading our consent agenda on the board floor. Since it's available electronically, it's online, so we are... Tonight, we're going to stop the, the process of reading the consent agenda on the board floor, and I will just accept a motion to, um, in a second, to uh, approve the consent agenda that's on the agenda. Uh, also, um, we're going to change a little bit to, uh, how we close out our meeting. So at this time, um, I'm sure my colleagues have had an opportunity to look at the consent agenda. Is anyone going to pull anything off? Good. Um, I will accept a motion to... Um, Approve. Oh, I'm sorry. We're. I'm on, uh, okay. I'm ahead of myself. We're not even at the consent agenda yet. We're going to start. <laughs> my bad. We're going to start with the good news is, Mr. Hanson. Tonight we have the Hillsborough High School ambassadors, and I would like to uh, call these uh, fine students to the podium, please, and introduce yourself, and uh, please share with us what you will. So, don't be shy. Come on up to the podium. Greetings, Dr. Henson and the school board and all of you. My name is Kenya Reese. I am the academy principal for the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program at Hillsborough High School. And I am so pleased to introduce three of our academy ambassadors, David Ware, Laterica Spivey, and Peyton Fry. Good afternoon, members of the school board. My name is David Ware, and of course I go to Hillsborough High School, and I am a member of the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. And before we get started, thank you so much for having us and hearing that student opinion. It's very important, and I really want to acknowledge that. Thank you so much. So a little bit why I chose my academy. Back in ninth grade, I really had no idea what I wanted to do in life, and so I decided to join the academy that wasn't necessarily career-related. So I joined the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program because I felt that it was the best way to get my foot in the door for college, to open those doors to those opportunities following secondary school. And I'm gonna tell you, it has worked. This past summer, I interned in the Vanderbilt Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, where I was studying alternative methods for water desalination in third world countries. The International Baccalaureate Diploma Program not only has taught me how to learn, it's taught me how to know, how to think, and a new way to understand the world around me. So I just wanted to let you know that this education is more than just learning. It's about becoming a member of society, and it's working. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm going to pass the mic on to Laterica. Hello, everyone. My name is Laterica Spivey, and I'm a senior at Hillsborough High School and the U.S. Community Credit Union Academy of International Business and Communications. I am also a student in the IB Career Related Program and serve as, serve as an Academy Ambassador. I joined the Business Academy because I had a sense from the beginning that this was the correct pathway to gain the tools and knowledge necessary to further develop my educational goals and career path. Um, so at an early age, I um, lost my mom and I um, also lost my house. And so that really drove me to be in the business field because I wanted to go back to that property one day and buy it my, myself. So when I moved to Nashville, I wasn't sure what the future would hold. But the small learning community of teachers, administrators, and the students within Hillsborough, the Business Academy, and the IBCP program helped me to provide the support system I needed and, and to actualize to my future. I enjoy the ch challenges business provides and the Business Academy teachers have challenged me to take the risk 
and the courses have exposed me to all of the possibilities in the field of business. It is because of the, this journey that I am prepared and plan to major in marketing at Howard University and become an agriculture, a, agricultural business professional and small business owner. The Business Academy was the foundation that opened doors to experiential learning and a number of student organizations. My experience, experiences began as a 10th grader. I was approached by Dr. Creeple, a teacher in the Business Academy, to work in the Student Credit Union at Hillsboro. In addition to learning the inner workings of the Credit Union and how to conduct myself in a professional work environment, it helped me to see the real world in action. While the Credit Union taught me the soft skills working in the Borough Brew, our school store as an, as an 11th grader solidified my interest in owning my own business. Mr. Porter, our teacher, was instrumental in helping me to learn retail operations and understand the value of collaborating with my peers and in business, in businesses, sorry. <laughs> After working with a number of different stakeholders, through these experiences, I realized the importance of being an involved citizen. That's why I joined the Youth in Government and Model UN, the Student Government Association and Girls Inc. And joining these student organizations has allowed me to become an advocate and express my thoughts in a political way. As a 12th grader in Youth in Government and Model UN with teacher Mr. Baghan, I'm working with the I've worked with a diverse set of students, which was what I would encounter in the working world. The student organization also helped me to cultivate my ideas and use my voice to make change locally and in my community. I've had a similar experience in Girls Inc. facilitated by our Dean of Students, Amy Kate, where I am learning how to become a leader and become passionate and to advocate for female empowerment. I've learned that I am resilient. I have lost a mother, but I gained a supportive aunt and uncle, a host of friends and teachers who care about me. I am the footstool for other girls that are going through traumatic experiences. I am setting the example to let them know that they can too push through to the other side. There are many other student organizations such as SGA, DECA, and experimental learning opportunities that have been afforded to me through the academy model and even more so through the IB career related program that I would love to mention in detail. But if there's one final thought I will leave with you today is knowledge that I'm grateful for all, the, all these opportunities that have been afforded to me and feel blessed that despite all that I've been through and the teachers and teachers at Hillsboro, at Hillsboro have helped me not to just look towards my future, but that I am prepared because I have the tools and to, I have the tools to achieve my goals. Thank you to Dr. Reese and Ms. Wren for their help along the way. And thanks to MNPS School Board for this opportunity to speak in front of you all today. Thank you. Hi, my name is Peyton Fry. I'm also a senior at Hillsborough High School, and today I'm here representing the Academy of Global Health and Science. So my journey started freshman year. We got to walk around and look at all the academies, see what we wanted to do. I promise I was so confused. I did not know what I wanted to do. But when I saw the lab and I saw all the simulation, I saw all the tools, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew global health is where I wanted to be. Sophomore year, we were afforded our first experiential learning experience at St. Thomas Hospital where we got to learn the ropes and the rules of just the regular hospital setting. And I think that was the first stamp in my passport that I can really do this and healthcare is really something for me. And junior year, I was afforded the opportunity to do a six week internship program with Meharry Medical College and Nashville General Hospital, job shadowing in the fields of radiology, family medicine, OB and so much more. Not only did I get to learn and see just the ropes, I got to hands on get in and meet patients. I did triage, I got to learn how to work an MRI machine. And it was an experience that I don't know how I could ever repay to anyone. It was truly amazing. Not only did I get to learn about the, just the regular health side of things, but medical ethics, and something I strive for now more than anything is an advocate for social and emotional learning. And I, 
I was a, I'm president of HOSA this year at my school. It's our future health professionals program where we compete in health related competitions. We do community outreach and advocacy for public health issues. So one of our biggest things we're working on this year is um, mental health month and advocating for students with mental health issues and talking about mental health in school. And I've gotten assistance with this from the MMPS Student Health Council, which I'm a part of as well. And not only has the Global Health Academy influenced me as a student, but it's influenced me as a person. I came where I graduating high school wasn't even on my mind. And to now know that in just a few months, I'll be at University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, <coughs> majoring in nursing and minoring entrepreneurship is an incredible blessing that I never, ever, ever saw in my future. And I would not have been able to do it without Ms. Wren, my amazing teachers, the wonderful students, and you all for letting this academy process be possible. So on behalf of Hillsborough High School and from me, I would just like to say thank you and thank you for letting us be here today. about y'all but I love hearing from our students in our schools yes. I think they're they express themselves so well they have had incredible experiences um, in our schools and that to me is that and the performances that we get to, to see at the first meeting of the month that's the best part of all this whole meeting so anyway I love having them in our in our at our meeting uh, we will move on to awards and recognitions at this time Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, we're proud of our award-winning employee wellness programs, and tonight we are presenting three more national awards. Accepting for Metro Schools will be David Hines, our Executive Director of Employee Benefits, John Z. Holt, our Staff Wellness Coordinator, Martha Shepard, Medical Director of our MNPS Healthcare Centers, and Lori Netty, our Clinic Director in our Healthcare Centers. We will present the awards one at a time. First, uh, the 2019 American Heart Association Workplace Health Achievement Award Index Gold Level Recognition. This first award is Gold Level Recognition from the American Heart Association. I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Hines and crew for them to make the presentation. Hello, on behalf of the American Heart Association, we are thrilled to present um, MNPS of wellness centers with their second year in a row of achieving gold on the Workplace Health Achievement Index. And that is truly a feat that has been accomplished by very few um, organizations across the nation. They can count themselves on a handful of organizations. And to achieve gold for two years in a row, it means that they are striving to make continuous improvements and we really wanna congratulate them. So thank you and congratulations to the leadership as well. Very much. I don't want to say too much because it's all going to my head at this point. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just want to thank uh, the trust, the board, you know, for the support we get. I mean, we, we're getting to do fun things. And I'm really seeing my job has changed more from managing benefits to managing health. And it's a fun place to be. And I just want to thank you. Well, we would like for you to come up for a photo. And I'd like to ask Ms. Jill Spearing, who is on the Insurance Trust and who has spearheaded a lot of this work, to pose with the picture, please. Absolutely.
For the second award of the evening, representatives from Cigna are here to present the 2019 Cigna Wellbeing Award. Good evening. I'm Greg Allen, I'm the president of Cigna. Uh, thanks for having us here again. Paul Huffman's the client manager uh, managing the account from Cigna's perspective uh, with, with the school system. So uh, we are here uh, again uh, from two years ago, and again, you guys have won a national award uh, that's our culture of well-being award. And so things that, that Cigna is very focused on that we try to uh, partner with uh, folks in the community, but specifically clients, uh, to improve the health and well-being and peace of mind of, of their employees. And you guys are definitely doing that. Some, some examples of that, obviously, with, with the clinic uh, that's run and represented here, with the fitness center that's run uh, next door as well. And then uh, particularly, one of the things that, that stood out amongst the application was uh, the focus. Of our, I heard one of the students talking about it, mental health awareness and, and what's going on. Uh, one in five people uh, are, have a, a mental health and a behavioral health uh, issue or an event. Uh, and so we all know somebody that struggles with this. Uh, and so we applaud uh, the school system for, for doing some things on their benefits uh, to make uh, emotional health, mental health visits uh, more affordable for, for their employees, for, your, for your, our customers, y'all's employees and families. Uh, our entire branding campaign around Cigna is about emotional health and well-being uh, this year. So it's, it's something that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, and so we're here to present this award. It is called the Culture of Well-Being Award to uh, the same crew, David, John Z, and Dr. Shepard, and Laurie. So congratulations and, and thanks for what you're doing in our community. Thank you. Pose for a picture with us, please. <laughs> just for, I guess, uh, I'm just on to that. Hi, Greg. Well, did you actually go there? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks for everything. I just want to take a second and say that um, during the summer last year, I heard uh, a teacher came to talk to me about how unhappy she was, but then she said, the reason I'm staying in Metro schools, mm -hmm. she said she, her husband just didn't want to leave the clinics. <laughs> so uh, that speaks highly of the work that this team has done. So thank you so much. Thirdly, I would like to uh, uh, present the C 2019 C. Everett Coop National Health Award. Our third award this evening, uh, Metro Schools has been awarded honorable mention designation for this prestigious national award for workplace health promotion programs. To qualify for the COOP Award, our workplace health improvement programs helped individuals change unhealthy behaviors and reduce health risks and established a culture of health at the workplace and in the community. We're proud of our employee benefits and staff wellness teams and appreciate their efforts to make Metro Schools a healthier and happier place to work. So. Uh, I think Mr. Hines has that uh, trophy in front of him, and so we'll we'll do one more picture, Miss uh, Spearing. That'll be part of our wellness program, up and down. We're also recognizing the contributions of three of our partners this evening. <laughs> Public education is a community venture, and Metro Schools relies on the expertise of community partners in many areas. This evening, Dr. Antoinette Williams, our Executive Officer for Student Services, will help us recognize three organizations working with her department. So I'm going to turn the podium over to Dr. Williams. Good afternoon. I want to take a few minutes to share some of the great work that is being done to support our students and their families through our first-time drug offender program. The first 
Lifetime Drug Offender Program serves as the district's drug diversion alternative for students who commit their first drug offense. Instead of being expelled, these students are referred to the program where they receive a free drug consultation from Bradford Health Services, and both students and parents attend a Saturday drug education class. Once the student and parent complete the program, the student is able to stay at their assigned school to continue their academic education. As a result, the Student Services Department through the Office of Drug Education have the honor and the privilege to work with the three community groups who have served and supported our students and families who participate in the First Time Drug Offender Program. As I call your organization's name, please come and stand with me at the podium, please. Bradford Health Services. Bradford Health Services provides outpatient and intensive outpatient treatment for students with substance addiction. Their intake staff has provided at no cost to the family or MMPS free drug consults for students referred to the First Time Drug Offender Program. Bradford Health Services has also provided 302 drug consults already for the 2019 school year. DC4, DC4, also known as Davidson County Drug Court, is one of our state's long-term residential drug recovery programs that is supported by the National Drug Court Support Foundation. The NDCSF is a community-based nonprofit organization established in 1996 to help the substance abuse problem in our criminal justice system. DC4 Judge Seth Norman recognizes the need for treatment and instead of incarcerating these individuals, they complete a three-year treatment program. Residents participate in community outreach as part of their treatment by speaking to school groups, telling their story, and encouraging our students to make better choices. DC4 has been providing this service to the first-time drug offender Saturday classes for the last six years. Mason's Kelna Lodge, number 124 AF and AM of Nashville, Tennessee. The Mason's Kelna Lodge, number 124, was established in 2007. The members are Lawrence Moses, Timothy Hamer, Carlos Smith, Keith Bentley, Evan Chalmers, Furbel Hintz, and Bradley Doss. They have all committed to helping boys on the path to becoming good men and taking good men and making them better. During the 2018-19 school year, Lawrence Moses and his brothers donated lunch for students during the Saturday classes. Not only was lunch donated, the members came and spent time with our male students during the mentoring group sessions. They have assisted with registration, served lunch, as well as anything that is needed. So today, Bradford Health Services, DC4, and Mason's Cal 124, we truly value your partnership, and we thank you for your support and the services you provide to our students and their families. Lastly, I would like to recognize Ms. Stephanie Davis. Ms. Davis is our coordinator of Safe and Drug-Free Schools, and she has been serving in this capacity since 2011. Stephanie works very closely with these three community groups in organizing and planning all of the many parts that are necessary to make our First Time Drug Offenders Program a success. We applaud you all for your dedication and for making a difference. Thank you. It truly takes a village, does it not? Um, as I announced earlier, we will not be reading the consent agenda on the board floor, but at this time I will accept a, a motion to approve in a second. I move to approve the consent agenda as written. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. 
Uh, show of hands, please. I'll approve the consent agenda as presented. Opposed? Thank you. Well, that was me. <laughs> okay, we will be uh, moving on to um, number F under um, governance issues, our organization. Mr. Henson, is that you? Oh, okay, never mind. My bad. So we um, are going to committee reports, and we have one committee report today, and that's teaching and learning. Ms. Berry. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, our teaching and learning committee met today from 3.30 to 4.30. It was a very productive, excellent meeting, in my opinion. And uh, Dr. Changus helped us to uh, look at the possibilities of uh, the academic performance framework uh, and uh, what we might need to consider for the future. And David Williams, Dr. David Williams, and his team presented uh, not only about balanced literacy, uh, but also about uh, our K-2 um, literacy program. And uh, we had some, there were a few um, comments about uh, some confusion that was out in the field and that will be rectified. And uh, we really appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fearing. We do have a, a, a short board report um, this evening. Um, the MMPS Board of Education held their first retreat of the school year last Friday on October the 28th at the L MMPS Wellness Center right across the street. Um, all board members were in attendance for at least part of this retreat. The morning uh, session was conducted by uh, Dr. Tammy Grissom and Ben Torres from the Tennessee School Board Association. They reviewed board norms and boardmanship with us. They discussed the characteristics of an effective school board. They discussed with us the importance of reviewing our strategic plan and having information about that at every meeting. Tammy and Ben talked about board leadership through setting policy. TSBA worked with this board extensively in the last year as we rewrote <laughs> our policies. Lastly, they walked us through a director search um, process and timeline. If this board decides to do a director search in, um, in the year 2020, then we would have to have that um, director name no, and hire no later than June 1st, or otherwise we would have to wait until 30 days after the August 2020 elections. We did not make a decision on this. We did decide uh, schedule a se another retreat for January the 10th, and we will be discussing it at that time. And I asked my colleagues just to keep that in front and center so they can, you know, make a, a good decision on that when we um, reconvene at a retreat in December. Um, in, the, in the afternoon, we had an in-depth presentation from Dr. Tony Majors and his team around a new MMPS compensation plan. Uh, an effective and new compensation plan will not be an inexpensive endeavor, however, but we need to make up for past inequities and we need to bring the minimum wage up to, for our employees, up to at least $15 an hour. Those are things we asked for in the last budget cycle and those are things we did not get. So I'm still smarting over that just a tad, if you can tell. <laughs> so all together, I think it was a very successful retreat and I look forward to um, planning and attending the next one. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Director's report. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, we're proud of our teachers. We're proud of uh, the uh, Red for Ed group and the relationship that we have with MNEA and its leadership. MNEA asked us for the opportunity to discuss their work on the memorandum of understanding uh, between MNEA and the Board of Education. Board Chair Anna Shepard will begin this discussion. Okay, I would like to introduce uh, Amanda Kale, who is the MNEA president. Is Michelle going to be with you? Okay, and Michelle Sheriff. Good evening, uh, members of the board and Mr. Henson. Um, on behalf of MNEA, uh, my name is Amanda Kale, I'm the president. Um, on behalf of MNEA and Red for Ed, I would like to present to you 1,433 signatures from 95 different schools calling for a request to uh, call the vote to exercise our right to engage in collaborative conferencing in matters relating to salary, wages, insurance, fringe benefits, working conditions, leave, payroll deductions, and grievance procedures. Um, I would like to say, first of all, that I appreciate very much, uh, I've met with almost 
all of you individually and talked with all of you about this process, and I, I appreciate your support. I appreciate um, the uh, Mr. Henson and um, Dr. Battle and your team have been very responsive when we have met, and I, I appreciate some of the changes that have already been implemented. We would like to move forward with uh, negotiating some changes to our MOU. Um, we still have cards coming in, um, so we'll have more to present. We have until October 30th is our final deadline. We needed to present 15% uh, uh, cards from 50% of the non-certificated, or I'm sorry, certificated non-supervisory uh, employees, and we have well over that. Um, so I would just like to present that to you. I know that then the process goes to you to name uh, the, co the committee to call the question um, to oversee the vote. Um, I'm happy to work with you in any capacity uh, going forward and making that happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can you, would you give those to Mr. Dr. Sevier? That would be awesome. Thank you. He's got they are, they're grouped by school and alphabetized. He's got better muscles than I do. Okay, moving right along this evening, we are going to move on to announcements. Ms. Farron, would you like to start that off? Uh, I don't have any today. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bush? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to uh, report on our, um, ret uh, not retreat, uh, we actually went to a conference. Uh, five board members went to the CUBE conference. And let me tell you what CUBE stands for because I didn't know it at first, but I just knew it was going to be a wonderful conference, and it stands for Council of Urban Boards of Education. And I'll tell you a little bit about what they do. Um, CUBE currently represents over 100 urban school districts in 32 states in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Our member districts educate ne nearly 8 million students in almost 12,000 schools with a, with a collective budget of $99 billion. CUBE helps urban school boards leaders find solutions to challenges, at the local level and seeks to improve their policy making effectiveness. CUBE is a dynamic forum for urban school board members to share innovative practices through issues, uh, seminars, conferences, legislative advocacy, research projects, professional networking, opportunities, specialized publications, and local governance and policy assistance. Whew, a lot, right? Um, school board must be uh, school boards must be members and in good standing with their state school boards association to, to participate in CUBE, and we were so that's all we attended. It was an amazing um, conference. Um, there are about 24 sessions, and that it's impossible to attend 24 sessions in two days. Um, so, um, I, like again, five board members attended. Um, I went with uh, went with Amy and Jill, which was a great experience. So, in our breakout sessions. Um, Ms. Bugs attended, Ms. Uh, Gentry attend, attended the conference also. Um, in this um, conference, um, we kind of pick and choose where we want to go, what, what, what sparked our interest. Um, if it was budget, if it was um, teachers, or ways we can um, incorporate different things to, to bring back to our di district. It was really a very great networking uh, conference, and it just focused on urban schools, which it really was it was very impactful. So you learn a lot about what you can do, what other school districts are doing, and they were very raw in their information, meaning that they were very transparent. Um, they talked about their struggles and how they improved and moved their needles um, in their district. So it was very impressive. So we, were, we, we actually learned a whole lot. And a lot of the information that I received, all the note taken I took, uh, I will be bringing some information back to our district so we can move our needle and take us in the right directions, which we are doing great. Um, so yeah, we had a great time. Uh, let's see. Um, the food was great. Yeah, yeah. Important. It was a lot of food. And I tell you, I'm not a big um, dessert eater, but I tell you, every piece of dessert that put, they put in front of you, when you tried it, it was the best. I mean, I was so impressed. Um, so the food, the entertainment, the, the speakers were amazing. I mean, there was a point that I cried during some of the, um, the speakers and, and their stories. So it was just very impactful. Um, the next CUBE um, conference is going to be in the beautiful um, Houston, Texas. Uh, Houston, Texas. I'm sorry, yeah, Houston. Yes, that's what the next one's going to be, September 24th through the 26th. And I encourage every board member who did not attend this year and, every, and our superintendent to attend. They did have... 
um, lots of superintendents to attend, lots of board members to attend, and it was just really, really, like I said, very impactful, informational, and um, so I'm looking forward to next year. So we had a, a good time. Um, it was in Miami, Florida. Y'all jealous? It was in Miami? Yeah, yeah, we had a good time. It was nice. Um, so lots of pictures. So we had a good time. So again, I encourage all of us to go next year. Thank you so much for allowing me to report this. Ms. Brooks? Ms. Brooks? Sure, I have a few. So yesterday, Councilman Freddie O'Connell and I had the pleasure of uh, speaking on behalf of Congressman Cooper to MLK seniors, juniors and seniors about the importance of registering to vote and voting. This is certainly a nonpartisan conversation, but we really wanted to answer their questions um, kind of uh, coach them through what it feels to be defeated or to feel like your vote doesn't count and, and explaining to them that it really does. So it was just a great back and forth conversation we had with them and I appreciate the opportunity. Also, I had the opportunity of attending Inglewood Elementary School's STEAM Showcase. I've been for the last three years and it is always so much fun. The kids, it typically starts out with a just for real showcase of them, their art, um, some musical rend uh, renditions, and then you can kind of explore the campus. And students, those teachers, the staff, the students there are just doing phenomenal things. I could brag on them for forever, but Inglewood is another hidden gem in, in East Nashville. I am going to be impartial and say, or be biased and say that District 5 just has some awesome schools, but East Nashville is just amazing, and Inglewood is a prime example of that. So if you ha if you get a chance to go to any of their spring festivals or spring showcases, please please do so. I would also like to take the time to shout out Warner Elementary School. I had a parent email me and say, hey, I know as a school board member you get a lot of bad feedback, or not a lot of negative feedback. You hear about the bad things happening in schools, but I want you to know that this is my son's first year at Warner, and any, any hope that I had lost in public education was restored through Dr. Gibbs and his... Uh, staff. So whatever, is, I'm, I've been to Warner once this year. I'll be back there as principal for the day on the 29th. Uh, Warner is, it looks totally different. It is beautiful. Teachers just have a totally different uh, response when I come in the schools. That principal is rocking. It just, another hidden gem in East Nashville. Move to, no, don't move to East Nashville. We're kind of packed over there. But if you get into an East Nashville school, you will, you will not regret it. Um, Another East Nashville school, Rosebank Elementary, had their fall festival. And when I say they had bounce houses, they had face painting, they had henna, they had food, and the, all this was put on by the PTO. So uh, again, I keep hearing from community members, how can I get involved? You can always support your local PTO. You don't have to be a parent, you don't have to be a teacher, you can just be a concerned community member that wants to donate your time or energy. I promise you, those teachers, those parents will appreciate it, I, I, I promise you. Um, on October 23rd, tomorrow, HEAD will have their, their fall festival. Um, the Lachlan Design Center, we, we will be having a conversation October 29th. I invite the entire community to come out. It will be from 6 o'clock to about 8 o'clock. If you remember, uh, NPR did a story on Lachlan and what's happened in that school and in that neighborhood, and just about what, what may look like resegregating our schools. And that community just really wants to have a conversation about how do we diversify? How do we make sure that the wonderful things that are happening in Lachlan are either spread to other schools or that we really incorporate what's happening in the rest of the community inside of our schools. So please come out, be ready to have a real conversation and a discussion about how to best support those students, those staff, and that community. Uh, again, that's October 29th at 6 o'clock p.m. I will be there and so will some MNPS administrators. So we'll be having, again, doing a real deep dive conversation. Um, uh, Fall Hamilton's uh, SEL night will be held to, uh, on Thursday from 5 to 6.30. So ag again, another opportunity to go support a, to support a school and its PTO. And then the How I Feel Art Showcase will be held at the National Public Library, the Bordeaux branch, from 2 to 5 on October 27th. That's this Saturday, <clears throat> this Sunday, I'm sorry. So please, you have a, a few different opportunities to support our students. Uh, on a bit of a heavier note, I do want to send condolences to the family of Rashawn Walker. He was a student at Maplewood who was in the, excuse me? Wallace. I'm so sorry, Wallace, Rashawn Wallace. He was a student at Maplewood. He was in the right place at the wrong time, at his father's house, and there was an unfortunate incident. His father was robbed, and so not only did he lose his son, but he lost, you know, other material things. But we certainly want to wrap our arms and our hearts and send our thoughts and prayers to that family, to the Maplewood students, to the Maplewood staff, who I know love that, that young man. So just please keep them in your prayers. And lastly, um, to follow up on the CUBE conference, it really was great. We learned a lot of different things. And one thing that I did not know, that there are a lot of different school districts that are watching and monitoring Nashville because we, 
our lowest, or I'm sorry, our most disenfranchised subgroups are moving three times faster than the state. That has never happened before. So think about the black students, brown students, ELL students, students with any kind of exceptional needs, and there was a fifth one. I'm so sorry I'm missing. But students that have not typically been supported in the ways that we thought they should be were supported, are continuing to be supported, and we are si finally seeing the fruits of that, uh, that hard work. So thank you to the teacher staff and administration of MNPS for being able to support those different subgroups, as well as our majority members of the community. Ms. Walker, Rupert Walker. So I want to start by saying that November 8th is Parent Teacher Conference Day. So calling on all parents to call your school, schedule your conferences. Really important if you haven't already met your child's teacher, teachers to do that. Um, can't stress how essential that relationship is for your child's success. Um, Hillsborough is having a trunk or treat on uh, the 28th, and it's also an open house. Excited about that. I want to thank the National Public Education Foundation for recognizing and awarding Hillsborough's core team with a grant for their restorative justice work. And I'm excited to be principal for the day next week at Aiken with Councilman uh, Mr. Cash. So thanks. Ms. Delrod. Thank you. Uh, first, happy report card day. Um, so I am going to be bringing an amendment to student records policy 6.600. So I'm requesting time on the governance um, calendar for that. And then after that, we have our local thing. So McMurray just got uh, certified as a lead gold school, which is the first middle school in the entire state of Tennessee. So that's an incredible accomplishment by everyone at that school. And then also within our central office staff and then everybody that we've worked there. But it is a huge accomplishment. We just talked about this at our last school board meeting about how energy savings are important to our bottom line in general. So it's a huge accomplishment. Additionally, thank you, Jeannie, for bringing it up. Uh, Pencils, Principal for a Day is next week. So if you have not signed up, please do so. It's a great opportunity to get inside of the schools. If you are curious about what's going on inside of our schools or how to be a better advocate or whatever it might be, this is a great opportunity for you to do those things. Um, then we have... For myself, the Oliver Middle School is going to be, ha we're going to be having a community meeting there. So if you are a parent, teacher, anybody like that, that might have interest in a community meeting at Oliver Middle School that is happening on November 5th at 6 p.m. And I'm glad everybody had a good time at the CUBE conference. I'm actually leaving uh, this evening, immediately after this, to the Great City Schools conference. I believe I'm the only person going. Um, as the representative for our school board. So looking forward to bringing that back to y'all at our next meeting. I do have a couple of announcements. I was honored to be able to present awards after the preliminary performances last Saturday at McGavick High School. I, along with Jeff Smith, for the executive director for Music Makes Us, presented awards to all the bands, placing in the top three of each category. Last Saturday was the 41st Music City Invitational held by McGavick High School Marching Band, and that was my 25th one to attend. Um, this coming Friday uh, is the 28th, and it's the, uh, it's the 28th uh, Eagle Run at Andrew Jackson Elementary. It's a day of family fitness and fun for all um, Andrew Jackson Elementary School families. And a huge thank you to John George and Deloitte for hosting the students and families at McGavick High School on Tuesday, October the 29th, a week from tonight. This is a, um, with the FAFSA night, and this is um, a huge help to some of our students and their families, and I, for one, really do appreciate um, Deloitte stepping up to the plate on, on this one. I just would like to remind our viewing audience that in light of uh, recent events in December of 2016, uh, this board unanimously passed a safe, uh, a, a safe zone for MMPS schools. And so I just want to remind us that we did declare schools as safe zones for all of our students and our families. They have to know that they're safe when they attend school. And um, so tonight, I will close out the meeting. And be, being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. We are done. Keep in mind, we have a teacher appeal. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.